I think there's a lot of coaches, therapists, doctors that try to come across as having some level of compassion, whereas Mark is all compassion. I love his books. Dealing with crazy, it's my life. <laughs> I live a crazy life with crazy people around me, so I just try and meet them at crazy. My listening since I've met Mark has just got better and better and better. My whole life is, is better for knowing Mark, I can tell you that. Mark's greatest attributes are his ability to listen and feel what you're feeling and then be able to help you either articulate that or deal with what you're dealing with. And I know that sounds crazy and people would say, oh, well, no one can do that. Well, maybe you haven't met Mark yet. My name is Dr. Mark Goulston. I'm a medical doctor and a fellow of the American Psychiatric Association. I hope my books have affected the medical community by teaching them to do a better job of listening. My book, Just Listen, is not evidence-based and is all empirical. And what I've been trying to teach the world is that whoever you're with, people are always listening for something underneath they're listening to you. And if you can tune into what they're listening for, they'll open their hearts and minds to you. Even in the name of this award, uh, Shine the Light, it seems like it was made for Mark Wilson. He is shining the light in his own way, in his storytelling, in his books, in his podcasts, but also in the work that he does, his goal is to help every one of the people that he interacts with learn how to shine their own light in this world. Dr. Goldstone deserves this award because he's the one of the rarest of rare coaches in the world who can walk on the spectrum of sociology, organizational, behavioral and clinical psychology in such an effortless manner that the audience is spellbound by his simplistic vocabulary and in-depth analysis, which to me personally, personally is mind-boggling. He doesn't care what walk of life you come from. He's not sitting around going, I need to get paid or I'm not going to help you. He is just there to help. He is one of the more giving human beings of his time, and his energy, than I, than I know. He's like a lighthouse of positivity. You know, he's keeping people safe. He's shining the light on them, trying to bring out the best. And I just think that he does everything with a genuine desire to help. You know, doesn't expect anything in return. He does everything from a place of kindness. Mark, meeting you, um, as I hope I've told you through the years, has been one of the greatest gifts of my life. There's no one more deserving of an award like this. And I just count you and Lisa and your family as um, people that I close, hold very close to my heart and will forever. I feel blessed to have you in my life as my friend, philosopher and guide. Congratulations on receiving this well-deserved Shine in the Light Media Award. Keep on doing good work for humanity and God bless. You've absolutely helped me navigate some of the roughest waters that any human being would have to go through over the last five years. You've been there every moment. You've been an absolute legend to me and I'm utterly, utterly grateful for everything you've done and the person you've helped me become. Mark, I'm a better man. Since you came in my life. And I truly appreciate you. So much so that I will choke up. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for being here. For everybody. I want to thank the LA County Medical Association for the Shine the Light Media Award. And I'm, I'm humbled by it. And I'm hoping that it helps us to do a better job with our patients and do a better job with our colleagues because we're all in this together and we're all hurting.
Well, just like all of you, I can hardly wait to find out what I say. <laughs> <laughs> you know, one of the best things about hearing things like I just heard is it gives you something to live up to. And uh, I feel quite deserving of, of the praise that I heard, but uh, I paid them enough to say it. <laughs> uh, also, I can't resist the temptation to seize my time is a teachable moment. If I were to ask you, which I'm not going to, but if I were to ask you to raise your hand if you know of anyone, uh, including yourself, who's worried about the mental health of one of their children, by the name of someone that you know, and raise your hand if you know of someone who's worried about the mental health of their children. And, and I'm really honored uh, to be partnering with Jason Reed. He was a, a, a fellow who kind of broke down at the end. His 14-year-old son died by suicide four years ago. And he has a documentary called What I Wish My Parents Knew, where he interviews 10 teenagers uh, about their lowest point. And it's mesmerizing. Uh, and I've been looking for 25 years for something that will change the conversations between parents and teenagers into something in which they emotionally connect instead of locking heads over various things. Um, and uh, we did presentations together where we show the documentary. It's mesmerizing. You go back to your children and they say, what's the matter, Mom? What's the matter, Dad? And your eyes water, and you say, I just realized how much I love you. And it flips the conversation. And so he shares his experiences of what he missed as a parent, and what he wished he'd known, but was too late. And then I share some of the things that I've learned. It's all about it's a teachable moment. If you're worried about uh, one of your children, and your friends are worried about one of your children, I'm going to give you a script. And, I can, and it's available on the internet. And the script goes something like this. Uh, do it uh, with your child when you're doing an activity. You know, teenagers, if you haven't noticed, can't stand heart to heart. <laughs> Unless they initiate it. But it is nails on a chalkboard. You've all been there and you can't stand. So when you're doing an activity, like driving in the car, this is what you lay out. You say, uh, you know, honey, a lot of us parents are worried about our kids and how the pandemic is affecting them. And I'm worried about you, so can I run something by you? And hopefully they'll oh, they're in the car. They'll say, they'll roll their eyes and they'll say, okay. And here are the four prompts. The first prompt, and they were listed, but you couldn't really see them because it flashed through the screen. The first prompt is, at its absolute worst, how awful are you capable of feeling about your life and yourself? And they're going to say, what? That at its most painful worst, how awful are you capable of feeling about your life and yourself? And you know, if you're fortunate, they'll say, pretty awful. Uh, there's an approach that I developed called surgical empathy, which is a way to go deeper. And, 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 and the taste of that is, uh, pretty awful or very awful? Okay, Mom. Okay, Dad. Very awful. Second problem. When you're feeling that way, how alone do you feel? Pretty awful. Pretty awful or very awful? And don't go through these things like a checklist. Get them to tell you more. The third problem is, take me to the last time you felt that. Was it 2.30 in the morning a few nights ago when you heard you walking around your bedroom? And, yeah, tell me about that. And there's something that's magical that happens. When you can get your teenager to describe that low point so clearly that you can see it with your eyes, they will feel it. Yeah, it was 2.30 in the morning and I, uh, uh, I couldn't get to sleep and I had a test the next day. That sounds awful. What do you do next? I couldn't get to sleep. I, I thought I was kicking the wall. That sounds awful too. What did you do next? I, I started looking around the cough medicine or the sleeping pills. You hide them very well, I'm not sure now. Uh, what happened next? Some of us. 
The fourth prompt, the most important thing, and if you're fortunate, you will have earned the right to their eye contact. Were those fair questions? And the fourth prompt is you say, look at me, I have a favor to ask you. Well, it's more than a favor, but we keep it as a favor. The next time you're feeling that way, or even heading down the road towards feeling that way, I want you to do whatever it takes to get your dad or my undivided attention. Because our minds are filled with too many things. And do whatever it takes to get our undivided attention. Because there's nothing more important than helping you feel less alone than you feel that often. And by the way, you're not a burden. And that's not a burden. And you may think you're burdening us. It's not a burden. And my evidence for that is that one day in the future, you're going to have a child like you. And if you're fortunate enough, they'll open up to you. And it won't improve you. So thank you for the always having that whole association patient here combination.